And the best bit about trees is they don't move, so you can get really close to them. Look at the size of this massive beach. All the telltale signs for beach. Look at this bark here. Found this under the tree. So this is quite good because it shows you what it's like in winter. We've got the buds here. You can see the leaves that are coming off. And also these characteristic beach masts. Now underneath a beech tree, you can see loads of these coming off. Characteristic spiky four bits here. And the beech mass seeds will be all about here too. Kind of little triangular seeds, you can find them. Here is a beech leaf. Interestingly, there's been studies on beech to show communication. When they're under an attack, all the surrounding leaves lower their photosynthesis rate. Even if a deer was to have a munch at a twig, the beech responds by increasing its tannin levels, which make the tree taste horrible to the deer. Underneath the beech you can see where all the beech nuts and leaves have landed. It's not great for wildlife. Definite fight and competition for light. So we're lucky enough to have this native species, the Scots pine, in our woodlands here. You can see it's got that reddish bark in the platelets here. And if I look in the ground, I can definitely see some evidence that it's definitely a Scots pine to help me. We've got some Scots pine pine cones here. These are closed, but I've also got some that are open as well, and I'll show you those. Another telltale sign is some of the pine needles have fell off here. The cool thing about these, you can tell it's a pine because when you look at how they're attached on, the pine needles attached in pairs. So I always remember P for paired and pine. So pine trees tend to have paired needles Spruce tend to have single and the firs tend to have a kind of fruity smell when you rub their needles together. Look how different the bark is of this Sitka spruce and all the little round platelets. The pine cone's really different too. It's got a real papery, softer feel than the rest. Look at this Norway spruce, how long and cigar shaped it is instead. And here's a Douglas fir pine cone with the little mouse tails there. I think a squirrel's had a little snack under here. These cones are really different. These are from the larch. They're much smaller. And if you look at the leaves here, the new shoots are really bright green. And they all come out in whirls. Here you can see a close up of the pine cone, how small it is. And it sits in a little peg on its twig there. The larch is one of the only conifers to shed their leaves in winter too. I've stumbled across a little patch of some ash. Closer inspection, you can see how pale it is. There's some markings on it too. The leaves are compound and the leaflets are in pairs. Here you can see nine leaflets in one leaf. There's little serrations at the edge too. I love how nature takes hold. Even when it's fallen over, it's growing. This ash tree is doing a superb job of sprouting it really. Although it's not a native tree, the horse chestnut is really recognisable in the forest. Look at those big palmy leaves, it's like a big handprint. It's the wrong time of year for chestnuts, but look, I found these shells underneath the tree from previous year. Found a lovely little hawthorn bush here. It's 
to the park. The flowers of the hawthorn are so delicate and pretty. Perfect for bees though. Another tree that has flowers is the elder here. The flowers aren't quite out yet, but when they are, I'll make a nice cordial from them. Here you can see the twigs and the bark. There's a soft pith that goes through the twigs, which makes them perfect for making little beads and pea shooters and things like that. My walk's taken me into a completely different habitat now. This is a riparian woodland. The trees round about here love wetter soil. It's always near water as well. Here's an alder, and when you're passing, have a look. You can see a leafy lichen here. Always a great indicator of air quality. Alder are completely adapted to growing next to the river. Their roots form great wee hidey holes for fish and caddisfly to hide amongst. In fact, its wood actually gets stronger underwater and it doesn't rot either, which is perfect for using for things like sluice gates. Apparently, you can make a green dye from the alder pine cones. Another species that lends itself well to this riparian woodland is the bird cherry. Wow, look what we've found amongst the leaves of the bird cherry. It's a caterpillar. This is specific to the bird cherry. It's a bird cherry ermine moth caterpillar. And it will grow in to be an ermine moth, which kind of looks a bit like a Dalmatian. It's white with black dots. It builds these little silk tents to protect itself from predators. Most of the trees growth has already been done by now, so hopefully the munching that this caterpillar is doing won't have too much lasting damage for the tree. It certainly won't kill the tree anyway. They've adapted well over time to cope with caterpillars. It's amazing how many different types of habitat there are along the Clyde Valley here. This is a stand of Douglas fir. You can see the wide fissures with a kind of orange tinge to the bark. And if you look at the needles, underneath they've got these two bands. If you look at the ground beneath it, there's not much happening. It's not very good for wildlife. Scottish Wildlife Trust have done a little bit of management around here. So because the monoculture is not great for diversity, we've clear felled it and replanted with native species. So this is going to support a much wider variety of insects and plants. I can't wait to revisit this area in the coming years to see how the trees have grown and to see what wildlife's moved in. I'm on my way back now. Another side of the Clyde Valley I found this mighty oak. I suppose this is a fairly young one, really. It's maybe a couple of hundred years old. Look at the burrs in this young oak. So this is the tree's response to an insect or a fungus attack. These are highly sought after by wood turners who can make cool things out of them, like bowls. The further I go on, the older the trees seem to get. These are the Cadzo oaks. They were planted seven centuries ago when Robert Bruce was still alive. People have had a massive impact over the years in these trees, clearing for farmlands, pollarding by the white cattle that used to live here, and cutting them for timber. You can certainly see how heavy and gnarly and cracked the wood is. The branches hang heavy with dead wood and some of it's fallen to the ground. But great thing is, it's wonderful for wildlife. Look at all those nooks and crannies for the wildlife to live in. In fact, the oak tree can have 500 different types of insects associated with it. That's why they're so important for nature. I hope you've enjoyed learning about my local patch and you've been inspired to go out and explore your patch too. I'm no expert and every day that I go out I learn something new and I hope you will too.